the main thing that I spoke to all, my entire cast was about authenticity. Everyone from the lead down to the, the last extra. Authenticity of thought. My thing was always say, don't lie to the camera. Be, be honest in the moment. If you're not feeling it, don't do it. Because it will come across as a, as a lie and fake. <laughs> In a film uh, like this, where, you know, Jamaican culture is at the heart of it, both set in Jamaica and in UK, it's important to me that Jamaicans watch this movie and say, I can relate. So I ask my actors to just, you know, level with me on authenticity. I ask them never to do anything that they didn't feel comfortable with. Uh, and, you know, it was, a, it was a process that we all embraced. And I, I just, it was it, it just interesting to watch them question themselves about is this real or not is this a real moment or not and once once we all started to adopt that standard if you like it became sort of like paramount to everyone like is that real it doesn't feel real and we would try you know and try and address it for me and Idris was getting to the trauma of D that he carries that that he's a, a, um, a quote-unquote gangster by that virtue because of that pain and open it up so that an audience won't just look at him like, a, oh, this is, a, this is a gangster kid that no one cares about, and another gangster film. Um, we, we spoke a lot about something like Goodfellas, for example. Uh, Goodfellas, what Martin Scorsese did beautifully was humanize these experiences and have us love them. And the love story was a great way into that, um, into an audience really kind of accepting uh, some of these mistakes. For me, uh, I've seen a lot of kind of Jamaican films and there seems to be a lot of stereotypes that I think that in this one we don't really have. Like, you know, you think of Jamaica, you think of a lot of cussing and, and, and carrying on. But with this project, it was very much, you know, just be as real to yourself as possible. However, bring the Jamaican element about. So me personally, I don't cuss all the time. So it wasn't about, you know, oh, what a... no, it was just more truthful and, and, and telling the being honest with yourself. How, how it sounded was very important to me because being Jamaican, I understand how Jamaicans think and when we see ourselves on camera, we want to be believable. And so how it sounded, as Amma was saying, he would, you know, sometimes, because he wanted it to be as authentic as possible, which is something that I appreciate Idris for so much, you know, the fact that he got Jamaican actors to be a part of the film, which I think added to the authenticity. Uh, authenticity and he was also very open you know to suggestions you know if we, we we would be in a room doing rehearsals and he would say to me does this sound right you know is this how you would do it and I I had the freedom to say you know not not really this is not how we do it because he wanted it to be real you know and I appreciate that and so yeah the, the language and you know how we are portrayed on camera as well we wanted people to understand the film you know, we have Jamaican Creole, Jamaican Patois. We can say something right now and you don't know what I'm talking about, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can say something at this point and you have no idea what I just said. You know what I mean? So we, 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 we spoke on that and we went through that throughout the film and Idris said, listen, I don't want to water down the Jamaican dialect, but I want, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to use subtitles. I want, the, because Jamaica, we, we, are, we are a British colony, you know what I mean? So we, we do speak English. So the thing is, it's our mix, it's our melting pot, and you'll get our patois. But if you listen keenly, and if we slow down our language enough, you'll understand it perfectly. So that was one of the, one of the things we, we had to do, and even I had to do some ADR, you know, because yeah. they, they were like, what, 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 what did King Fox say? <laughs> I'm like, it's English, just listen, it's the rhythm, you're confusing the rhythm, it's English. <laughs> you know, so that was great as well, you know. It was very different from music videos and, you know, short films I've done before. I learned a lot as a director. Uh, I've been on millions of sets, I've worked with really great directors. But this was like, a, a, you know, day one at school for me. And moving forward, I'm always going to operate on my, on my films because uh, there's something about controlling the frame as opposed to watching a monitor. I found it way more satisfying to be able to control the camera. 
When I worked with Ridley Scott on American Gangster as an actor, you know, he said, you know, we're looking at the actor, but we're also looking past the actor, we're looking at the door, and we're looking at the way the light drops. And if your eye deviates from the actor to the door and something's wrong with the door, you're out of the scene immediately. And it was something that I, you know, instilled into my actors about their environments, you know. Uh, King Fox and I, we walked around his studio and he had a good look at it, every single picture. It was important because it's King Fox's land. I wanted my actors to really feel like this is their world, you know, uh, because of that reason. And, and I think, honestly, Ridley Scott gave me that for sure. The fact that Jamaicans, we love the camera, we want to be actors, we want to, everybody just want to act. So it was yeah. just easy to have yeah. extras and people just break whatever they're doing in the community just to accommodate. So it's like, for me, I would just love to see much more films come to Jamaica because it, 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 it puts us in a trance, a peaceful trance, where we just want to work together yeah. so it can look good for the country and the culture. Yeah.